Hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. We're in a little different setup today because once again the sun is beaming directly into where I typically film and it's fine and it's fine. And I'm really excited for today's video because it's something that I feel like I used to watch on YouTube all the time when I was growing up which if you didn't know, I've literally been watching YouTube since I was like 12 years old. I just love beauty YouTube. And the fact that I get to do this as a job is just like, I might cry about it vibes. I'm just feeling really thankful for this job today. So I wanted to just talk about makeup and have fun together. So we're gonna do an old school YouTube video where we talk about if I lost all of my makeup, which, bitch, I have a lot. What would I repurchase first? And we're gonna do it together and put it on together so we can really talk about it. This is not necessarily my like favorites of 2022 list because if I really thought about what products I would buy first, it would be because they're either multi-use, they have like good coverage for every day or can be built up and they're easy to use. Like I'm looking at this mix and it's like, these are my workhorse products, you know what I mean? They're not necessarily the most flashy, but they are the ones that are going to get the job done for needing to wear it every day if I lost everything. So let's just hop into it. We're gonna be talking about something sort of from every makeup category that I tend to use, but also if I'm being honest and I actually lost everything, I probably wouldn't buy like a primer and a spray, but that's what we're gonna do because I just wanna do a full look. So if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe. We talk about skincare, makeup, we do hauls, we do vlogs. We kind of talk about everything and I would love to have you subscribe. So it's a good thing we're starting off with primer because I am really feeling super dry these days. And this primer was actually just restocked on Merit Beauty's website because it has been out of stock for a while. And that is the Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. So people use this as a serum, but they also use it as a primer. I like to use it as a primer. I will say the one thing I don't love about it is that it's very thin and like kind of gets everywhere. So I do take all my rings off before I use it because it just has this like feel to it, but it's so nice on the skin. I love it so much. So I was never even a primer person before this at all. And as I've gotten older, I feel like I need to have something right before I put on my foundation to help blend it and make it look really hydrated and nice. This is super thin, like as you can see, like water. So I basically just use like one or two pumps and it kind of gets everywhere. Like you gotta be careful with it. I don't really know what the right um, packaging would be for that product. Like, I don't know if it would be like a toner bottle instead of a squirt. Like if it was in a toner, like the um, Peach Slices Snail Mucin one, I feel like it might be easier because you wouldn't have to like spray it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but I don't even care if I don't like the packaging because the product itself is so good. It just gives your skin this amazing glow and it really hydrates it. It feels like it has oil in it, but it doesn't. I have no idea what that is. I need to look into it because people are always like, isn't that an oil? And I'm like, no, it's oil free, but it just feels like so hydrated. I've also never had pilling with that product. Like it is amazing. And so that is probably one of the first things that I would buy, especially in the primer category because I'm a Susie Susie. I use it every day. For my choice of like a foundation or skin tint, obviously you know I'm going with a skin tint. And I bet you thought I would say the Summer Friday skin tint because that's sort of what I've been loving and what was my top pick of 2022. And I was going to pick that one, but I actually decided on the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body. It was something that I tried in 2022 for the first time and I cannot get enough of this stuff. I find that it is so unique and so amazing for every day, but can also be built up. This is a water-based product, I believe. So when you use your fingers with this product, it builds it up to like an even higher level of coverage. But I actually like to use it every day with a brush. So it gives you more of a skin tint finish. I love this. It also has 1.7 ounces of liquid in here. So if I was gonna buy something because I didn't have anything, I would want it to last me a while and this would definitely do that. I just love this product and I think it's like aesthetic as well. Like it just reminds me of, oh yeah, I'm at, I'm like a model and I'm getting my makeup done and I'm just like fancy and cool. I also think that this shade in N2, 2N, N2, 2N, N2, N2 is literally my perfect shade. 
Like, I've never had makeup match me better than the shade N2 in this product. Like, and the funny thing is, it matches me, like, all the time because it's sheer enough that it works on my summer skin and on my winter skin. And that is something to rave about. It just looks so natural on the skin. I love it. And you can see like I still have a little bit of redness peeking through where I usually do around my cheeks and around my chin. And I'm honestly fine with that. I feel like I prefer to cover that type of stuff with a concealer rather than adding on more foundation, which is why my choice for what I would buy first is the Colfi concealer. This was like a huge favorite for me in 2022. And although it didn't make my favorite of 2022 for concealer it was very close up there this concealer is amazing this is the main match concealer and i have mine in shade coco crush this is available at sephora and i think that why this concealer is so special is because it has that look and feel of a lightweight very glowy dewy concealer but it has the coverage of something that's going to give you a little bit more which i love so i really really have like a tall order for my concealers and a lot of that has to do with like the texture of the concealer i want it to sink into the skin and not settle in my fine lines and look glowy and dewy but also reflect a little bit of light from the under eye and i feel like this does all of that while providing more coverage than my like usual everyday choices so if you're feeling extra tired one day and you feel like you want to stay glowy but you might need a little bit more I love this option and also it can be thinned out if you use a brush it can be thinned out if you use a sponge and it can be built up in coverage if you use a brush so it's just really versatile which is again why i would choose it for the first thing that i bought back and i also like to use it to cover like the redness on my skin it's just really versatile and that's honestly something you would want in your first product back something that can be used all over the face under the eyes and also be built up or worn as an everyday option like i would not be choosing like the shape tape you know what i'm saying although shape tape seems to be back these days people are loving shape tape again uh-uh not me you won't catch me wearing shape tape baby So I'm, I'm really not feeling super, uh, I'm not, I, I'm feeling kind of dry today is what I'm trying to say. So I actually, I don't want to apply a powder on my skin today because I'm just not feeling it. But if I were to buy one back, you already know what it would be. It would be the Kosas um, Air Set. Is that what this is? Cloud set. God, I get everything confused. I would get the Kosas Cloud Set, specifically in the shade Feathery. This is my shade. I love this product. It, it really provides a nice mattified finish to the face without dimming down some of the glow that comes through with the products that I like to use, especially if I'm not using a tubing mascara. I feel like I want to set my under eyes, but I don't want to completely mattify that area, and this is what does it for me. This is a baked product, so I do get hard pan sometimes on this like you can see around the edges all I do is use a tissue and like rub over it and it breaks that off so I don't have a huge problem with it I know some people do wanted to mention that but I absolutely love this powder and would definitely buy it back so I'm actually gonna skip ahead quickly to highlighter because I have started wearing my highlighter in a specific way that is before putting on my bronzer and blush for like the most perfect blend and my choice would be one of these um this is the hollywood flawless filter from charlotte tilbury and this is the elf halo glow liquid filter these are essentially the same thing but one is 45 dollars and one is 14 dollars um i don't really know how i feel about brands completely duping other products like this like i i don't know i'm just glad that there's an affordable option for a product that i love so either one of these would be bought back i love the charlotte tilbury one and i feel like the shade i have shade three in both of these but i feel like the shade three from the charlotte fits me a little bit better than the shade three in the elf so i'm just going to use this one today but they do the same thing if you're looking for this kind of product but this is what i would buy back because again that versatility of product so like I wear this as a primer some days. I will wear this as 
a pinpointed highlight, I will wear this over my makeup or under my makeup, kind of like I'm doing today. You can underpaint with this product. You can use it as an eyeshadow. You can use this with a moisturizer. Like there's so many ways to really utilize this product that I feel like it's an easy choice for something that I would buy back first. Because like, you know, buying a pinpointed highlight, like for example, if I did buy back my Sephora collection highlight, which was my favorite for the year, and I love that product. It's just not as versatile in texture as the Charlotte Tilbury. Do you know what I mean? Like I can get this glowy, dewy look with the Charlotte, and I can wear it in multitude of ways. So that's why I would pick like a liquid highlight like this to give me that super nice classic highlighted look, but that is super versatile since I would only have like 10 makeup products if we're being H with ya. Super duper pretty. I love wearing that stuff everywhere. I could literally wear that every single wear. I love it so much. I have had this for years and I have so much left. They make those in a mini, so if I was actually buying back stuff, I would probably buy it in the mini. Speaking of minis, my choice for bronzer. I realized that this was my choice for bronzer because simply every time I travel or I don't want to think about what bronzer I want to wear, I always pick this one, and that's the Milk Makeup Bronzing Stick. I wear mine in the shade Baked. This is the full size that they make now. Like The minis are now the full size. They used to make these really big. I don't think it's necessary. I have had this forever and I have not even gone through half of it. I love this bronzer. It's absolutely beautiful. And again, it's easy. Like it's everyday wearable and it's something that I love to travel with because it's plastic. It doesn't break apart. It's cream. It's middle of the road in terms of like the satin finish to it and it's really easy to use. So I actually like to apply it to my hand first like this and then I'll go in with like an angled brush and I will just kind of pick some up and then I'll go in to bronze up the face. I think this color works really well as a bronzer on my skin tone and it's look very natural looking, which is another reason that I would choose it because it is not super glossy, like the Merit or the Makeup by Mario, which have more of like a glossy finish to them. But it's also something that can be worn with powders or with creams because it has more of that like matte satin finish. So, that's why I would pick this one. It's really, really simple. I love traveling with it, like I said. The color is really nice, and that matte satin finish is just great with every single type of makeup look, which makes it very versatile and unique versus like a more balm style bronzer or a powder bronzer, which may not sit perfectly well with cream. I love these. I also love these blushes. Like I truly do. Milk Makeup knows what they're doing when it comes to cream products. I just love the bronzer stick especially, and I use it all the time. It just looks like I have this natural bronzeness to my face, and that's why I love it. It's super natural looking. Also, I got these little makeup erasers to use at my desk because... I was using way too many tissues. These are awesome. I don't think I would use it for my face, but like if you're like getting ready and you feel like your stuff is always messy, get a little makeup eraser. All right, for my blush, which by the way, I would choose a brush like this if I could only buy one back. And this is the BK Beauty A507, but really any sort of angled brush. This one is the sculpting brush from Real Techniques. Like this one is from Japanesque, I think. Like any brush that has an angle to it like this and it's kind of dense, I would buy back first. Whichever one you see that's like that, that's what I would buy back first because you can use it with everything. So I'm going to use it again today with my blush option, which is the Tower 28 Beach Please Blush in the shade Power Hour. This is my favorite blush, I think just like for, like if I had to say, like what this video is, if I had to buy one back right away, I'd be like, you know what, it's going to be the Tower 28 Power Hour because I know it's going to look good on me. It's that middle of the road, like again with the bronzer, satin slash dewy finish. There's no shimmer, there's no glitter, and this shade looks good with everything. So if I was worried about, you know, making sure that it was going to match, like my future eyeshadow looks or whatever, I wouldn't have to worry about it because this blush is just so gorgeous, especially on like mid-tone skin, like light medium skin, medium deep skin. I think this color can be built up and it's very pigmented and will last you a really long time. 
time. So if we truly lost our makeup, we got to think about that. Like, okay, well, when's the next time I'm going to buy makeup again? I better make sure this one lasts me a long time. And it certainly will. And it just sits very beautifully and very naturally on the skin. So again, can be built up to be more pigmented for like a night out, but also can be worn very lightly for that everyday look. It's so beautiful. Love these formulas so much. I love all the colors. I would choose any of these to buy back first, but Power Hour is my favorite shade. Super easy to use. Again, you can apply it on the back of your hand and then apply it, or you can actually just open the product and use this area here to like kind of tap down the product. So absolutely love it. And Tower 28 is one of my favorite brands for sure. Okay, so our complexion is looking really cute. Very everyday, very natural, but still like pretty good coverage considering we've only got on like a skin tint and a concealer. So I would probably skip buying an eyeshadow. Let's be honest, I'm not really an eyeshadow person. You guys know that. That would not be the first thing that I would go back to because I would just use like my liquid glow filters around my eyes. So we're gonna go right into mascara. My choice for mascara is actually an empty and it's in my empties bin. So I'm not gonna use that because I literally have pulled it out of the trash like four times <laughs> to use it. And I think it's on its last like, but it would be the LA Girl Plush Lash Mascara. It is such a beautiful mascara, it's $6. If I was buying back mascara, I would wanna pick a cheap one that was really good because at the end of the day, mascara expires after three months anyway, so choosing an affordable option is good, especially if you're just beginning. But I would choose a washable slash tubing option regardless. So the LA Girl mascaras are amazing. So in its place, I'm gonna use the Merit mascara today. If I were to choose a high-end one to buy back right away, it would probably be the Merit one. I've also been into curling my lashes lately, so I am going to give it a little curl. Um, this is from Japanesque, but I am getting a lash lift in a couple days, so I will not need to be doing this for much longer because my lashes will be permanently curled. But I will say I love the Merit Mascara. It is absolutely gorgeous and super everyday fluttery, very natural. I will say like I do prefer the LA Girl Plush Lash because it can be built up to be a little bit more like dramatic. I feel like the Merit one kind of sticks to the everyday look, which is not a problem. Like I like an everyday mascara, but I do like one that is more versatile, which is why I would actually pick the LA Girl Plush Lash. Like I really would pick that one. I have to use another product in something else's place as well because it's also an empty and I mentioned in my empties video which I can link up above because it was my last video that I really want to start using what I have instead of opening new stuff which is why I don't have like a backup for some of these things because I already have other mascaras that I like and I want to use so I feel like this one's actually pretty much on its last leg as well but that's the Merit mascara and that's without so it is gorgeous I just I don't know I feel like I can get the same look with my LA girl and it's way cheaper but I do love this one for sure I also like the packaging because it is like a square so it doesn't roll around on your desk like it can't roll because it has sides <laughs> Okay, so for brows, I would probably buy a brow gel before I would buy a brow pencil. And I would definitely buy, and I just did, but it's not here yet, the Air Brow from Kosa's, specifically in the shade Auburn. This is in the shade Dark Brown. It doesn't work for me anymore because I try and match my copper hair to my eyebrows because my eyebrows are pitch black. So the only way to make it look like I have natural hair is if I also tint my eyebrows that color as well. So I do have the shade Dark Brown, but I just did my empties and went through both a medium brown and an Auburn like to the end of the time, I don't have any left. So I actually overplucked my eyebrows recently. I don't know if you can see this, but like, there's no tail. There's no tail. There's a tail. There's no tail. I have done this so many times. I'm so sick of it. Like, I always overpluck, especially on this eyebrow. Like, she's looking like Bella Hadid over here. I'm, I, I, it's a whole nother story. So anyways, I actually picked this up from Grande Lash. I'm gonna use this, to, or Grande Brow, I'm gonna use this today, but just know that it's actually the Kosas, okay? It's actually the Kosas air brow that I would use and buy. I have me using that, like videos of me using that all over my page. But this is the Grande Brow 2-in-1. It's a tinted brow gel and their brow serum, and it's in the shade Auburn, and I feel like I just need to have some little serum on this little 
tail, this poor little tail, and I am gonna fill it in with the NYX micro brow pencil. If I were to buy a brow pencil back, it would definitely be this one because it is super inexpensive and works just as well as high-end uh, brow pencils like the Anastasia Brow Wiz. Any of the pencils that are out there that have that like super fine tip, this one does it just as well. And NYX always has a very good shade range when it comes to their brow products. Like they almost always have a red and sometimes they even have a gray, which I think is amazing. And um, this one works very well for me. So I'm just gonna fill these in and then pop on the brow gel and I'll be back because it's not actually my choice. Actually the Kosas, that's my choice. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to be better about not opening things, you guys. If you're curious, this is the wand on the Grande Brow one. I like it, don't love it. It's not my favorite. The Kosas is my favorite, but a bitch needs to grow her tail back. <laughs> I feel like I actually just don't even like this, but I really just want that brow to go back. I might just buy like the brow serum, but it gets everywhere. Like, I don't know if the formula is too wet or what, but I feel like it gets little pieces of it all over, which I really don't like. And also the color is not auburn. It's like dark, dark brown. So I don't really like that but I want the damn tail back. I want my tail back, tail back, tail back, tail back. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know. I feel like it's too wet and it's just like, it gets everywhere and it doesn't really like put anything in place. So that's not a, that's not a like for me. That's a hate. And I actually bought that. So I'm going to probably throw that in the fails bucket. That's not what we're talking about today because the Kosas Airbrow is my choice and it's amazing. Okay, so for lips, y'all know I am the queen of like the tinted lip balm, like for example, the Tarte Juicy Lip. Whether it would be the actual Tarte Juicy Lip or something similar like the Phantom Lip Balm from Hourglass or like something like that that has that balmy texture to it but it's actually got a little bit of color and it gives a, off a gloss as well, that's something that I would pick. And there's a lot of new ones out right now. So there's a few from Flower Beauty that I'm testing. There's the new ones from About Face. I picked both of those up because obviously I love those. These new Rose Perfecting lips from a Wet n Wild, like pick your poison, I would pick one of those. But honestly, I'd probably pick back a Tarte Juicy Lip first just because I love these so much. This is the shade Honeysuckle and this is in their plumping formula. This shade also comes in their regular formula and in a lip liner. But again, it's like that versatile thing where it's like something that has most serves multiple purposes. So I could wear it alone or I could wear it eventually with a lip liner or over a lipstick. Like there's a lot of ways that you could wear this. You could build this up to get a little bit more color and it's just everyday wearable, but this shade in particular could also be worn at night, like going out, things like that, because it has a little bit of a darker tinge to it. And it's just so comfortable on the lips. So beautiful, so comfortable. So something along those lines is what I would pick, but it would probably be a Tarte Juicy Lip if we're being honest. Also, if I'm being honest, I would definitely buy back fake freckles of some kind. I actually didn't include this in my TikTok because I was like, would I really? But I would. Y'all know I wear fake freckles literally every day of my life. So I even wore fake freckles on my damn wedding day. So I don't know why I think I wouldn't buy those back immediately. I would probably end up getting a cheaper option at first, like the um, ColourPop freckle pen it works well it doesn't work as well as one of these that is like a liquid this one's from salty face which is my favorite i'll probably buy the freck next because it's been a little while since i've tried that one and i kind of feel like this color is a little dark for me it's like pretty much dark brown and i feel like if i had freckles they'd probably come in a little more skin toned or like reddish than like straight up dark dark brown but this one is really easy to use and I still have quite a bit left. So I'm going to use this one out before I get a new one because that's what I'm on in 2023. We're on being better vibes. Last thing that I would buy for sure, for sure. And also we can do this um, for skincare too, 
if you wanted to. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in, in a video like this for skincare as well. But I would buy the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist. I think they make this in a travel size now, which is probably what I would buy. I love this. I use it to finish off every single makeup look that I do, and I love using it also as a primer. So if I didn't pick up the Merit, I would definitely grab this as well. It's beautiful, and it actually makes a difference in the way your makeup and skin looks. It like helps kind of put all those products together, but it also adds an actual glow to the skin like none other. I absolutely love it. And the mist is really, really fine. I think I've gone through like half of this. I think this is the second one I've gone through. I use it every single day. I love it. And that is, my friends, the exact products that I would buy back first if I lost all of my makeup. And this is the final look. It's very me. It's very everyday. It's got a little bit of a terracotta look to it, a little bit of freckles, low maintenance coverage, but still enough that you could wear it during the day, at night. A lot of versatility in this look as well. I would love to know what your choices would be in the comments below or if you were shocked by any of my choices or if there's anything you feel like I'm missing in this look that I would buy back. I don't know for eyeshadows, you guys. I really don't know. I'd probably end up buying like a stick eyeshadow before I would buy like, oh, you know what I would buy? I would probably buy an about face matte liquid eyeshadow because those are amazing or something like that but it definitely wouldn't be like the first thing I thought of for sure um I've got a lot of new stuff I want to share with you I just pulled out a few things in this video to talk about but I've got a lot of new drugstore that I want to show you but I just did a drugstore video so I want to kind of like let it breathe so that you guys aren't feeling like you're buying a bunch of stuff I also have the new shades of the merit blushes I'll probably um swatch those soon in a short or something like that so you can see them but I also have them on my Instagram if you want to see what those swatches look like. So really excited for the next couple videos with you guys. I think we're going to talk about 2023 makeup trends and like what you guys have thought about them or told me what you think about them and some other really fun stuff. So I will see you guys in the next video really soon. I hope you have an amazing Saturday and I love you so much.